Can y'all hear me? Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Let us bow our heads in prayer. We're going to be coming from the book of Psalms. First, the 27th Psalm this morning. I love this. Yeah. Prayer for protection. Prayer of guidance. Prayer of assurance. Let us be assured of God's holy and righteous word this morning. And it reads, The Lord is my light and my salvation. So why should I be afraid? The Lord is my fortress protecting me from danger. So why should I tremble? When evil people come to destroy me, when my enemies and my foes attack me, they will stumble and fall, and there are many. Though a mighty army surrounds me, my heart will not be afraid. Even if I am attacked, I will remain confident. The one thing I ask of the Lord, the thing I seek most, is to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, delighting in the Lord's perfections and meditating in his temple. For he will conceal me where, when, when there is trouble, where trouble comes from. Hallelujah. He will hide me in his sanctuary. He will place me out of the reach on a high rock. Glory to God. Then I will hold my head high above my enemies who surround me. At his sanctuary, I will offer sacrifices with shouts of joy and singing and praising the Lord with music. Hear me, O Lord, as I pray. Be merciful and answer me. I have read to you seven verses of Psalm 27. May it penetrate in your heart and may you remember that God is always with you. He never departs from us. And even when your enemy come in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standing. And we can be secure and know that God is with us. Be blessed. Gracious, kind, heavenly Father, we come to you this day just to say thank you. Thank you for allowing us to gather here again this week. Oh God, we thank you for the week past. For some of us, it may not have gone too well, but for others, it could have been the best blessing we ever received. And for that, oh God, we say thank you. Oh God, we pray that you would be with us through this service. We thank you for our pastor. We thank you for our leaders, members, those that are streaming, and our friends. Oh God, we ask those that are in bereavement, we ask you to bless those that are in the hospital, who the doctor has said, I don't know what to do, but God, we know you to be the greatest healer, and you can do all things. Oh God, be with us through this week. Oh God, we just love you, and we thank you for the best love that you ever gave us, who is your son, Jesus Christ, who came to die for our sins, and he is now our redeemer. And those who accept the gift now have salvation. So God be with us. This I pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.
Father, we magnify and glorify your name this morning, Lord God. God, we thank you for the reminder that there is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain, Lord God, every stronghold. Lord, it's my prayer right now that those that may be online, those that are here in the sanctuary, Lord God, will open up their minds, open up their hearts, Lord God, as we move into the preaching hour to receive and hear your word, but not just to receive and hear, Lord God, but to apply your word to our everyday lives. Lord, Lord, we want to be better than we were the day before, Lord. So it's my prayer right now, Lord God, that we have readied ourselves, Lord, to hear what thus says the Lord. Anything that I have written that you would not have me to say, blind my eyes. Anything that I did not write that you need me to say, God, place it on my lips so that the most important thing of all, your word, Lord God, can move forth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And to God be the glory. There is power in the name of Jesus. As a matter of fact, that's the only name. Amen. The Bible says that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. Amen. Listen, I want to, before we get started, let me first say good morning to those that are on the stream and to the few of you that are in the sanctuary with me on this morning. Uh, it's good to uh, have those uh, here. More importantly, it's good to have those that are online still faithfully every Sunday morning. As we pause real quickly, we ask continued prayer upon the uh, Brother Buck, Earl's family, as on yesterday, um, he said so long for now to his father. One of the things that I was uh, impressed about on that on yesterday as I uh, was there at the funeral was uh, how they was talking uh, about his father and the mannerism of his father. And uh, as they was talking about his father, uh, I began to say to them, I think to myself, I said, well, that sounds a lot like Buck. And, and it dawned on me that uh, when, when parents raise you the right way, Amen. Amen. your mannerisms can't help but to reflect that of the parent that raised you. Amen. Amen. And so we want to keep him in his prayers and the family in prayers. And then secondly, I ask that you keep Brother Baloo in prayer, as the, today he gets ready to say so long for now to his son. And there's an all uh, listen, that's a hard and awful feeling when parents have to say so long for now to children. And so we ask that you continue to keep uh, him in prayer as uh, he and the family uh, get ready uh, to say. I mean, I say so long for now is because. We all have that wonderful hope of one day seeing our loved one again on the other side. Amen. And so we continue to stand in prayer uh, for the family as well. All right. Let's go to work. Thank you to everyone that helped out on last Sunday for our uh, 121st uh, church anniversary. What a joy. What a privilege. I'm a little bit, uh, a little bit uh, salty at my mentor because he came down here and preached his heart out preached us happy and nobody likes to come behind Pastor Hope and preach the way he did. Amen. We got to preach out to him. Hey, but I'm going to do the best sisters I can. Amen. I said best sisters that I can and I'm going to get out of everybody's way. So again, thank you. If you pack the lunch, carry, I mean, pack the dinner, carry the dinner, ran to the store, whatever you did to help us on last week, on last Sunday. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. <clears throat> Starting at verse 7. 7b. Let's do the B clause. B clause. So to keep me from becoming proud, some translation says conceited, I was given a thorn in my flesh. A messenger from Satan to torment me and keep me from becoming conceited. Mm. Three different times I begged the Lord to take it away. Each time he said to me, my grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. So now 
I am glad to boast about my weakness so that the power of Christ can work through me. That's why I take pleasure in my weaknesses and in the insults, hardships, persecutions, and troubles that I suffer for Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Amen. Word of God for the people of God. And just for a few minutes, we're going to get out the way really quick today. Just for a few minutes, I want to talk about blame it on the devil. Blame it on the devil. Yeah, blame it on the devil. J.B. Fox would say in the secular world, blame it on the alcohol. But I'm saying blame it on the devil. Amen. Y'all looking at me. Yeah, I, I listen to that music too. Amen. I, I like it. I know all. Yeah, amen. My new jam today is The Baby. I like The Baby. He be, yeah. So I listen to what y'all listen to. Don't, don't look at me like that. Blame it on the devil. It, 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 it doesn't take long. It doesn't take long to watch or even listen to a commercial on television to discover that we as a people have turned into a self-gratifying people. It's very easy to listen to every advertisement that comes on about any and every product that is on the market and it would be quick for us to surmise that 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 uh, the new key to life is instant self gratification. Mm -hmm. We 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 are made to believe. Hear me? We are made to believe by looking at commercials that we should have whatever we want. But because they are advertising it, to, so because they are advertising it, we should be able to have it to, because they're trying to convince us that we deserve to have it. Everything from clothes, cars, homes, jewelry, purses, shoes, food, uh, they, they, they convince us through advertisement that we have a right to possess. They, they, that we're entitled to own it so that now products are no longer about what's best for us, but now it's about what we deserve. So, 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 so that now we have developed somewhat of a uh, spoiled consciousness. Yeah, that that believes that if that that life should be about giving us and getting what we deserve. If we want it, we should have it. If we want it, we should take it. If we want it, we should be able to get it. So unfortunately, this, this whole self-gratification philosophy has now made its way into the fabrics of the life of the church. Because most of the preaching and teaching that we hear these days uh, is now rooted uh, and grounded in self-gratification. Many preachers today are more concerned about telling their people uh, how to get more stuff, how to get more of what God has for them, telling them that 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 it that it's, it's all about you. You deserve to be happy. You deserve to be struggle free. It's all about self gratification. Uh, so now the church has this. Uh, watch this. Has this expectation uh, that life should be entitlement. Uh, that we're entitled to have certain things. Uh, that we're entitled to have a certain kind of happy life. Uh, and that. And that the barometer uh, on whether God is pleased with us is seen in how much stuff that we have. That the more stuff that we have, uh, the more pleased God is with us. The more things that we have, uh, the deeper our faith is. Uh, so what people will do here, Sonia, is is they will run to a church uh, that's teach that watch this that's that's uh, that's uh, not that's not teaching them. Uh, Biblical principles on how to live, okay, but rather they'll run to the church that's teaching them of the tricks of manipulation to try to teach them how to get more of God's stuff, and then they'll end up being schizophrenic with their crazy selves because when you don't get what you think you should have, you start running around trying to figure out what's wrong with your faith because you think that God gives you stuff when He really wants to make you happy, amen. So, because 
because of you listen to some of these uneducated jack leg bootleg preachers uh, who are pimping the gospel uh, for their own personal gains and personal agenda and they are suggesting to you that you are in the wrong church uh, because if your faith was strong uh, you wouldn't have any problems uh, you wouldn't be sick you wouldn't have any struggles uh, now uh, you're wondering what's wrong with you uh, or what's wrong with God uh, because you should be living better than you're living uh, and I know a few of y'all ain't gonna say amen right there amen uh, but I because I just jumped onto your pew probably this morning uh, but if you ever read your Bible then you would know that in the Bible it says uh, in this life uh, you will have tribulations uh, not you might uh, not you may but you will uh, that 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 the shout of the Christian life uh, is not that you don't have trouble but the shout of the Christian life uh, is that your Savior has already overcome over every trouble that's trying to overcome you listen 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 God is not after making you happy let me say it again God is not after making you happy God's not after your happiness but he's after your holiness oh Jesus God is after a holy life hear me See, 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 we don't, we don't hear much of the preaching about living holy anymore. But God is still looking for a holy people who will live a life uh, that is exemplary and pleasing unto him. Holiness has nothing to do with how much you shout. Holiness has nothing to do with how much material gain that you have. But holiness is living a convicted life for that, that for God you will live and for God you will die and you won't sacrifice your convictions for self-gratification. Hmm. Yeah, see, y'all don't like to hear about holiness. Listen, listen, listen. God is not after making us happy. But he's after making us holy. <laughs> And, 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 and watch this. And to perfect his holiness. Yeah. His, in us. To perfect his holiness in us. Takes pain. Yeah. Yeah. It takes pain. To perfect his holiness in us. It takes struggle. So, so if you don't want no struggle. Then don't ask for the glory. If, if, if you don't want no challenges. Then don't ask to be holy. Because for God to cultivate and develop us uh, in his character and in his image. Uh, and to sanctify us to be more holy. God has to let us go through some stuff. Uh, because there are some lessons uh, that you only learn uh, when you go through some stuff. Uh, there are some stuff uh, that the book is not going to teach you. There are some stuff that the classroom is not going to teach you. There are some stuff uh, that you've got to learn in the valley. That's why it says yea though I walk uh, through the valley of the shadow of death uh, because there's some stuff uh, that you will, can, you can only experience uh, that you can get you got to go through the valley. I, I, I was reading I was reading this article for class this past week and I thought it was a great article so I wanted to share this article with you and it said that 80 to 85 percent of Americans are categorically going through what is called medical stress. Hmm. That, and, and, and that the largest category age-wise within the percentage of, is the ages, get this, is the ages of between 30 to 45. And, and, and yeah, and yeah, and, and, and the group that has the least stress, yeah, get this, Mother Wells, is the age group between 60 and 85. Which tells me, yeah, y'all said, mm, too. Which tells me that the reason that the older group don't stress them is because they've been through enough before 60 to know that the Lord will make a way. Y'all better hear me this morning. Can any of my 60 and older folk testify this morning that, that it, yeah, it, it ain't that you don't have any problems, uh, but you've been through, or through enough and long enough with the Lord no, to know by now that he walks with you and he talks with you and he tells you uh, that you are his own. Uh, so you don't get stressed anymore because you know uh, that the Lord uh, will make a way. Uh, can, any, can, can, can any of my seniors this morning testify? I know what it's like to 
the struggle. I know what it's like to deal with racism. I know what it's like uh, to have to share a bed uh, with my brothers and sisters uh, and share clothes. Uh, I know what it's like uh, to use aluminum foil for an antenna and have to use wire pliers uh, just to change the television station. Uh, are there any seasoned saints this morning that can say, I know what it's like to struggle. I know what it's like to deal with this and that. Uh, what's going on today ain't nothing new. Uh, I've been dealing with racism all my life. Uh, I know what it's like uh, to watch my mother have to clean somebody else's house uh, just to put clothes uh, on my back and food on my table. That's why I don't stress uh, because I've already been through it uh, and God brought me up out of it. Uh, and if God made a way for me before, he will make a way again. There, there, there are some things hmm, that you can only learn about God through experience. That's what Paul <laughs> is doing right here in this text this morning. He, he, he has been trying to defend his apostleship because there were some Judaizers in the Corinthian church who suggested that because he was not around uh, at the actual resurrection of Jesus Christ, uh, that he's not an apostle. <laughs> because, get this, now, now, by definition, by definition, by definition, uh, they, they are right, by definition. Uh, because to be an apostle, uh, you had to have seen uh, the re uh, resurrected Jesus Christ. Amen? So, so unless, yeah, you've been to heaven and have been at the right hand of the Father, you ain't no apostle. There's a whole other sermon, but we got to cope. They, they, they are criticizing his apostleship. And Paul ha, has spent a whole lot of try, time here, Marvin, trying uh, uh, to theologically debate with them about why he is an apostle. Uh, but you can't debate or even convince people uh, whose mind is already made up about you. Uh, sometimes you just got to let them go. Hmm? Paul finally gets smart. And he says, well, since none of my theology and intellect is going to work, hmm, then that, that I'm an apostle, that I'm, an, I'm a pastor, I mean, I'm an apostle, <laughs> then, then let me tell you something that I've experienced. Because you can debate theology with me, but you can't debate experience with me. <laughs> you can debate with me on whether God of the deliverance of the Old Testament is the Jesus of salvation in the New Testament. But what you can't debate with me uh, is that when I couldn't find, you couldn't get myself out of some situations, uh, that God made a way out of no way. <laughs> you can debate with me uh, whether God is Jehovah Shalom, the Lord is peace uh, in the Old Testament, uh, it's the Jesus of peace in the New Testament. Uh, but what you can't debate with me uh, is when I wasn't able to sleep at night, uh, that God walked me to sleep uh, and gave me a peace uh, to where I could finally get some rest. Stop. You can debate with me whether or not Jehovah Rophi of the Old Testament is the God that heals in the New Testament. But what you can't debate with me is when I was sick and the doctors gave up on me, God picked me up off of my sick bed. You can debate with me on whether or not God is Jehovah Yahweh of the Old Testament. It's provide, the providing Jesus of the New Testament. But what you can't debate with me is when I was broke that he prayed paid all my bills. Is there anybody in here or on the stream that can say, you can argue theology all you want to and I don't have enough intellect to argue theology, but what I do know is this for sure. When I was lost, God found me. When I was sick, the Lord healed me. When I was broke, the Lord provided for me. When there was no way out, the Lord made a way out. Is there anybody that can say, I, I know what I know and because of what I know I know it because of my experience Paul oh, Paul oh, Paul said Paul said Paul said let me let me give you all my experiences <laughs> so he starts talking to them about these wonderful visions that the Lord has given him and the things that God has showed him in the third heavens were, were things that, that, that no one else had seen, y'all. And Paul says, uh, 
God knows that as anointed as I am, I'm human. Boy, y'all better hear what I just said. He says, as anointed as I am, I'm human. And in my humanity, if I see stuff that no one else has seen, if God doesn't balance it, I'll run the risk of thinking that I'm better than everyone else. So to keep me from becoming arrogant or to keep me from becoming conceited, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger from Satan to torment me and to keep me from becoming proud. Now, 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 there's been all kinds of determinations of what this thorn was, y'all. Tertullian said uh, it was a headache. Uh, Kushner said uh, it was epilepsy. Ramsey said uh, it was malarial fever. Christendom said uh, that it was the opponents uh, of the word of God. John Calvin said uh, it was fleshly temptation. Martin Luther said uh, it was spiritual temptation. John Knox said uh, it was the infirmities of the mind. Catholics said uh, it was immoral thoughts. Alexander said uh, it was malarial fever. Chris, a conservative Christian said uh, it was sin temptations. I, I don't know what it was uh, and I really don't care what it was uh, because it don't matter what it was uh, and I believe uh, that God didn't let him tell us what it was uh, so that whatever yours is uh, that you can insert yours uh, right there because the church uh, has a bad thing, uh, a bad reputation uh, of doing a comparative analysis uh, of our weaknesses uh, and our humanities uh, so that if you think uh, that someone else's sin uh, is worth in your sin, then you think uh, you are more holier than they are. But Paul tells us uh, to put our own thorn right there so that we don't think uh, that we're better than anybody else. Uh, because as saved as some of us try to act in church today, uh, you do have a thorn. Uh, you have a thorn that's getting on your nerves. Uh, sometimes it's harassing you. Uh, something that's making you want to lose your religion. Uh, something that every now and then makes you want to quit. Uh, something that every now and then makes Makes you want to cuss. Uh, all of us uh, have got a thorn. Uh, so don't you come up in here Sunday after Sunday acting like uh, that you better than anybody else. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, every time I step up to this podium, uh, I step up in here reminded uh, of my weaknesses. So here's what grabbed my attention. <laughs> The text says, the text says, to keep me from becoming conceited, I was given a thorn in the flesh, a messenger from Satan to torment me. That's what it says. To, to, to keep me from becoming conceited. We got a problem in the text. We got a problem. Paul says, I got deeper vision. And because I got deeper vision, I went under deeper attack. Because if you are a person of vision, then you can expect attacks. If you ever get, yeah, 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 get the, get the, the faithful audacity to see yourself beyond where you find yourself, uh, then you need to be ready for attack. Listen, listen, every attack is not because you're living wrong, mm. but some attacks are confirmation that you're where God is taking you. Just read the text, read the text. I'm going to show you the problem. To keep me from becoming conceited, mm. I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger from Satan to torment me. First of all, <laughs> Satan is not sending you anything to stop you from becoming conceited. Amen. Think about it. Why would the devil send us something to keep us from having a spirit that he wants us to have? Hmm? The devil wants us to be conceited. He, he wants us to be arrogant. He wants us to be proud. He, he's not trying to make us humble. He, he's not trying to give us a spirit of humility. So, so, so how does the devil send something here, Marvin, to keep us humble? Jesus. In the original language, 
The implication is, I saw the vision, and the devil didn't want me to walk in what I saw. So he sent me something to try to keep me down, but when he sent it, God caught it and used it for his own glory. The devil sent it, but God used it because God has a way of taking the stuff that the devil sends to bring you down and he'll use it to build you up. And is there anybody that's on the stream right now that knows that God will take what the devil does and use it to bless your life? The devil has tried to take you down before, but God used it for your stepping stone and not your stumbling block. God took what he tried to use and flipped it around to bless you. Okay, okay, listen, 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 listen. God will take what the devil sends to destroy you and use it to develop you. Yeah, yeah. God can make your pain have purpose in your life. But well, it's good. It's good right here. Now, not only, the, the only way that God can take what the devil sends to bring it down and then flip it Okay, and use it to build you up. Is this right here? I only got this in one point right here, and I'm out of here today. You, you, you've got to number one decide which message will be your master. Which message is gonna be your master? Hmm. The text says, "A messenger from Satan to torment me and keep me from becoming conceited." And I prayed three times. Now, prayed in the Greek right here, y'all, it, 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 it's in the past tense. You, you, if, if you go back to verse one, you will discover that this vision that led to this thorn happened 14 years ago. He says, I prayed to the Lord and prayed is in the past tense, which means here, Vicky, get this, uh, he, 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 uh, when he got it, he prayed three times. Mm -hmm. Then he said, uh, but he said to me, oh, Jesus, uh, now those four words right there, he, he said to me, uh, is in the past indicative, amen, uh, with an error tense. Uh, it, it's something uh, that he said in the past uh, that is still reverberating uh, in the present. Mm -hmm. What Paul is saying uh, is I prayed when I got this thing 14 years ago, uh, and three times uh, I prayed about it. Uh, God kept saying to me, uh, my grace is sufficient for you. Uh, now I prayed here, Mother Wells, uh, it's in the past, uh, 14 years ago, uh, amen, uh, and God answered it when I prayed about it 14 years ago, amen, uh, and, and I says, uh, and he says, and I haven't, I haven't asked uh, to get it anymore because I've just decided uh, since I prayed about it 14 years ago, uh, and he told me 14 years ago uh, that my grace is sufficient for you, uh, I just decided uh, to trust uh, what God told me uh, and I don't know who I'm preaching to this morning I might be preaching to myself right now but maybe you need to stop begging God uh, and just start trusting God I'm telling you, start, start trusting uh, that he'll give you what you need uh, to walk through it uh, because he's not taking you uh, out of it huh? Paul said I just made up my mind that I'm going to stop trying to manipulate God <laughs> into changing his mind. So I stopped praying about that uh, and started praying, Lord, if you're going, if you're not going to get me out, uh, Lord, if, if, if you're not going uh, uh, to let me come, come out of it right now, uh, if you're going to leave me in it, Lord, uh, then give me the strength uh, to endure it uh, so I don't mess up your glory, God. See, you need to stop praying uh, for God to get you out of stuff uh, and just start asking God uh, to give you keeping power while you're in it. Uh, that's why the devil is mad with so many folk today, amen, because you stopped begging God to deliver you, and you started praising God while you were in it, and the devil can't figure out how it is that you're still going through it, but waking up every morning saying, this is the day that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad for him. Is there anybody in here on the stream, amen, that's ever cried and prayed and prayed and cried and cried and prayed uh, and God hasn't changed it yet. Uh, if that's you this morning, watch this. Uh, uh, here's my question. Uh, are you still here? Are you still in your right mind? Do you got 
lack the faculties of your limbs, uh, then you need to be thanking God this morning uh, that he gave you keeping power in the middle uh, of what you're going through. Uh, is there anybody that don't mind uh, typing in on the stream or just shout real quick, uh, he's keeping me. Uh, and, 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 here, and, and here, people are looking at you on your job uh, and they wonder why you always smiling uh, and showing up on time uh, and, and showing up to your station uh, ready to work uh, and they know that you uh, they know that you know uh, that they really don't care for you uh, it's because God uh, has given you keeping power people are wondering uh, why you're coming to church Sunday after Sunday giving God glory knowing all the hell that you're going through uh, you're broke uh, and your rent is due uh, you're sick uh, you don't have the money for the med medication uh, you're going through hell uh, if it's not this is that if it's not that is this uh, and the only reason uh, that she ain't giving up yet uh, is because you know uh, that God uh, has given you keeping power you've got to decide which message is going to be your master look at the text a messenger from Satan huh. Satan I've always wondered why when, 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 when they use the word devil in a sentence, it's D, you know, little d. But then when they use the word Satan in a sentence, it's capital S. <laughs> it's in your Bible, probably. It's probably capitalized, capital S. A messenger from Satan. Now, now get this. A messenger has a message. So, yeah, help me. So, 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 whatever Satan sent brought a message from the sender. <laughs> See, if I'm a messenger, then I am coming to you with a word from whoever sent me with the message for you. Are you with me? So, if this is a messenger of Satan, this thorn showed up with a message. Now, now, we don't know what, uh, what the message was, but if I could put it and make it relevant for right now today, <laughs> I believe that the message would sound something like this. Uh, you can't be no better than your parents. Mm -hmm. You can't get your degree. You can't overcome that addiction. You will never be marriage material. Mm -hmm. You were born to be mean, old, and nasty. Mm -hmm. you, you will never amount to anything. Uh, nobody wants you with all those kids that you have. Uh, amen. Uh, but whenever the devil sends stuff, uh, he sends it with a message. Uh, and you have got to decide for yourself uh, this message uh, that you are going to trust. Uh, are you going to trust what the devil said? Uh, or are you going to trust what the Lord said? Uh, because here's the struggle of faith. Uh, God said it 14 years ago, uh, but the devil keeps saying it every day, uh, but you still have this thorn in your flesh. Uh, so the struggle uh, of your faith uh, is to make what God said uh, true in your spirit uh, so that you hear it every day uh, like God is still saying it to you. Remember, I told you in the beginning yeah, that scholars have been trying to debate on whether this is a physical element or a spiritual element or a temptation. Uh, now the Greek word for messenger there right there is a derivative word uh, of euangelist, mm -hmm, which is evangelist, uh, which is in a person. So maybe Paul's thorn wasn't something, uh, but maybe his thorn was somebody. And, 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 I, yeah, and, and, and if you can just discover who your thorn is, <laughs> it will make your life a whole lot easier. Now, now, can I push it further? That somebody might not be somebody else. Because I'm a person just like you are a person. So maybe we are a thorn. Uh-oh. Hmm? Maybe that we are on point because sometimes we get in our own way. Preach, boy. 
So maybe your prayer should be, God, deliver me from myself. Huh? Deal with my temper. Deal with my arrogance. Deal with my pessimism. Deal with my negativity. Deal with my trust issues. Uh, deliver me from me, God, before I kill myself. Yeah, y'all don't like that. Yeah. Just maybe, just maybe, you are your own thorn. So instead of walking around here talking about what others are doing to you, and who said this and who said that, uh, maybe you are the one. Maybe you need to take a page uh, from what the old saints would say. Uh, it's me, it's not my mother, it's not my father, it's not my brother or my sister. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Is there anybody that ain't ashamed this morning uh, to admit that I need prayer for me? Uh, not for a blessing, uh, not for a miracle, uh, not for a healing, uh, but I need prayer to be for me to be delivered uh, from the me. See, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what your porn is. But, 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 but mine's is me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my, my thorn is me. But let me tell you why I can live with that. Because when I discovered what mine was, <laughs> it gave me a balance to not be arrogant. Because then I had to admit my weaknesses to myself. Uh, and when I did, it helped me to celebrate my calling. Uh, because God uh, doesn't use no one uh, that don't have any weaknesses. Uh, did you hear what I said? Let me run it back one more time. Uh, God uh, don't use anyone uh, that don't have any weaknesses. Uh, Moses stuttered. Uh, Noah was an alcoholic. Uh, Abraham was a pimp uh, who prostituted uh, his own wife. Uh, Jacob was a liar and a trickster. Hosea's wife was a hooker. Jonah ran from God. Jeremiah was suicidal. Elijah was burnt out. Martha was a worry ward. Peter was a gangster. Abraham was too old. David was too young. Mark deserted God. Timothy had ulcers. And Paul persecuted the church. So you can't tell me that God can't and won't use imperfect people. God will give you in empowerment uh, in the very thing uh, that used to be your embarrassment. Uh, did you hear what I said? Uh, God will give you empowerment uh, in the very thing uh, that used to be your embarrassment uh, in the midst of your mistakes, uh, in the midst of your problems, uh, in the midst of your dis uh, deficiencies. Uh, God will give you power in the very thing uh, that used to be your embarrassment. And my only question this morning uh, is, is there anybody that can admit, uh, yes, I've got some weaknesses. Uh, that's when uh, the Lord will give me the power. Because the Bible said, uh, when I am weak, uh, that's when I'm strong. Uh, so don't you be fooled uh, because you do have some weaknesses. Amen. Stories told. Amen. Two water pots. And one, of the perfect, one was a perfect pot. And the other water pot was a crack pot. <laughs> and the perfect one was always delivering its full portion of water to its destination. Nothing ever went wrong with the perfect pot. But the crack pot <laughs> was always ashamed of its imperfections. The crack pot uh, didn't look pretty, as pretty as the perfect pot did. It was scarred, uh, unlike the perfect one. It was marred, uh, unlike the perfect one. Uh, and because it was all cracked up, uh, by the time it got to where it was going, uh, a lot of the water had began to seek out. Uh, so it was only doing half uh, of what the pot was designed to do. Uh, and one day, uh, the cracked pot uh, spoke to the owner uh, and said uh, about the failures uh, of his structure. And the cracked pot said, 
head to the home. I really need you to fix me. I really need you to fix my cracks. I really need you to close in my cracks because it's causing me to leak out on my way to the journey. And I look bad compared to the other water pots. My flaws don't give me my full value. My flaws don't give me my full potential. And the owner said to the water pot, listen, as we head back to the house, what I want you to do, I want you to take notice of the flower garden. And I want you to notice all the pretty flowers that are on your side of the path. And then he said, the reason that the flowers are only on your side of the path is because I saw your cracks. I saw your flaws. I saw you leaking. And because I knew that you were all cracked up, I took advantage of all of your flaws. And I started planting seeds along the path that when you would drop in, you walk by the seeds. So because of your flaws and because of your cracks and because of your leaks that gave water to the seed that allowed these beautiful flowers to bloom along the path, I just used what you thought wasn't usable and I used it uh, for your own good. Uh, is there anybody on the screen today uh, that's not ashamed to admit uh, I'm not perfect uh, but God is using me uh, in spite of my imperfections. Uh, is there anybody in here who don't mind admitting uh, I'm not perfect uh, but God is using me uh, despite my deficiencies. Uh, I got some cracks along the way. Uh, I got some flaws in my life uh, but God is using me uh, in the midst of my crack conditions. God is using me in the midst of my deficiencies. God is using me in the midst of my flaws. I'm done. I'm done. Mm -mm. I'm done. Paul said, here it is. Paul said, I will boast even in the midst of my weaknesses. And do you know why? Paul is boasting in the midst of his weaknesses because God didn't say my mercy, <laughs> but God said my grace. Woo, Jesus, uh, let me say it again. He didn't say my mercy, but he said my grace. Uh, meaning uh, I'm going to give you what you don't deserve. <laughs> You haven't even lived good enough uh, for me to give you what I'm about to give you. You haven't even been holy enough uh, for me to bless you the way that I'm about to bless you. Uh, but because I refuse, y'all, uh, to let the devil have the victory, I'm going to give you something uh, that you don't even deserve. Uh, I'm going to give you uh, my grace. Uh, and is there anybody that can admit uh, that the only reason you're here today uh, is because you're living on God's grace? Uh, if people knew your history, uh, I'm not talking about uh, what people think they know, uh, but if people really knew your history, if they knew the mistakes you made, if they knew the bad choices you made, if they knew the mess that you made, they would look at you and wonder why, yeah, you look so good. And you can tell them it's not because of anything that I've done, but it's because of God's grace. And is there anybody in here that ain't ashamed today to stand on your feet and help me close this sermon and say the something about God's grace that will make me shout in the middle of my infirmities. Is there anybody in here that don't mind waving your hands because God gave you blessings that you don't deserve. God gave you miracles that you didn't even earn. It could have been worse. It should have been worse. But God looked beyond your faults and he saw every one of your needs. Listen, listen. There are two things about God God's grace. It's a sustaining grace. It gives you strength for every trial that you got to go through. And how many of y'all can testify this morning that the only reason that you made it through what you were going through is because God gave you strength to wake up this morning. He gave you strength to put your clothes on. He gave you strength to put a smile on your face. He gave you strength to go to work every day. He gave you strength to retire from a job. He gave you strength to make a way to church this morning. But it's not just sustaining grace, but it's also sustaining grace because somebody is still dealing with a phone.
born, uh, but people uh, don't know they get by looking at you uh, because you look better than what you're going through. Uh, you look better than what you're dealing with. Uh, you're smiling uh, like everything is okay. Uh, you're shouting uh, like everything is okay. Uh, you are even been waving your hands uh, like everything is okay. Uh, you've been shouting amen uh, like everything is okay. They don't have a clue today uh, that everything uh, is not okay. Uh, but the reason uh, that you're shouting this morning uh, is because you know uh, that God uh, has got everything all under control. Uh, good morning, Moscow. Uh, may the Lord bless you real good. Uh, I'll see y'all uh, in two weeks. Uh, but I came to tell you this morning uh, that no matter what you're dealing with, uh, be not dismayed. Uh, whatever betides you, uh, God will uh, take care of you. Uh, beneath his wings, uh, love of God. Uh, God will uh, take care of you. Uh, his grace uh, is sufficient. Uh, his grace uh, is all you need. Uh, his grace uh, will wake you up in the morning. Uh, his grace uh, will start you on your way. Uh, his grace uh, will put a smile on your face. Uh, his grace uh, will dry your tears. Uh, his grace uh, will give you joy in sorrow. Uh, his grace uh, will make you shout over your haters. Uh, his grace uh, will make you praise in the middle of and push it. His grace will make you come to church when all hell is breaking loose. I need somebody this morning to wave your hand because you know it could be worse. It should be worse. But because of God's grace, said because of his grace. Uh, do you know about his grace? Uh, is there anybody who can say if it had not been for the grace of God? <laughs> if it had not been uh, for the grace of God. Uh, I'm talking about God's grace. You ain't he all right? You ain't he all right? You ain't he all right? Uh, God's grace. Amazing grace, how sweet, yeah, y'all know that, come on, sing that with me, the sound that saved, yeah.
Somebody knows about grace. Somebody knows about God's amazing grace. That's why we can say praise God. Because it's something about the grace of God. Christ as your Lord and Savior, then I want to extend an invitation to you. If you was here, I'd say, come give me your hand, but give God your heart. But since you're not here, the Bible says that if you would confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. So right where you are, if you would just be willing to make that confession of faith, Father, for I believe that Jesus died for my sins and that you raised him from the dead. If you make that confession, then all I want you to do is email me at pastoratmonksgrove.org. Your name, your phone number, give me all of your contact information and I will respond. Not Monday, maybe Tuesday, but I'm going to respond immediately. But whatever you do, please make that confession. Time is winding up. Things are getting worse. Violence is getting out of control. And I just believe that God is getting tired of seeing the mistreatment of humanity. So don't put off today what you can do today. Secondly, if you're in here, if you've never confessed Christ as your Lord and Savior, come give me your hand, but give God your heart. But whatever you do, it's time to get right with God. It's time to get right with God. Father, I pray right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord God, that we, your people, just understand what your grace really means to us. God, your grace has given us and continues to give us what we have not earned and what we do not deserve. But it's because of your grace that we're able to get opportunities to correct and get right what we've been unable to get right. So God, we thank you today for your amazing grace. That's why God, we can say praise God. Praise God. Because if it hadn't been for your grace, we wouldn't be here today. So God, I pray this morning that your word hadn't just been heard but that your word has been will be applied to our lives. I pray this morning, God, that your word hadn't been ignored. But God, that your word has been heard and received. And that God, we begin to deal with our thorn. Whatever our thorn may be. Have your way today. And we'll continue to give you the glory. The honor and the praise. Now, God, I can't end this prayer without thanking you for Jesus. I thank you for your son, Jesus, who came and died on the cross for our sins. But he didn't stay dead, but he was raised from the grave. And the fact that he lives means that we live. So we thank you this morning, Lord God. And we give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise God.
praise God. Listen, as we as we get ready to go, as we get ready to go, as we get ready to go, um, I want to remind everyone of your tithes and your offerings. If you can give by Givelify, okay, you can do it via Givelify. Just go click on Give Now. Uh, for many that are on the stream, I know you've been hitting the Give Now button and things, and it takes you directly to our to the site, giving, giving platform site. And so we thank you uh, for your generosity and for your continued faithfulness and your commitment. And then lastly, we ask all the members to continue to give. You can even give your church anniversary still. Amen, lights. Amen, you can give your church anniversary still. But we do ask everyone continue to stay faithful. Listen, your faithfulness is not unto the church. Your faithfulness is unto the Lord. Amen. Also, and then we want to uh, we want to recognize and acknowledge uh, some of our guests that are here today this morning. We thank you, but to God be the glory. We thank you for coming and fellowshipping with us. Uh, I hope that you. Felt right at home in your father's house. Amen. Amen. And that you were blessed this morning. Amen. All right. All mind and all heart is clear. Come on, let us stand. Let us stand and get ready to go home. Let's go home. Amen. When it tried to send something our way, Lord God, you took it, grabbed it, and flipped it, Lord God, and used it for your good. So, Lord, it's my prayer right now that we, your people, your chosen generation, Lord God, as we get ready to depart from this sanctuary, those that are on the stream, as we depart from one another, that we never be departed from your presence, Lord God, that God, your hand of protection will always be upon us to lead us and to guide us and to keep us safe there out of harm's way. Then, Lord, I ask special blessings right now to Brother Balloon, Lord God, and his family, Lord, as they ready their hearts, Lord God, and they ready their minds, Lord God, to make their way over to the funeral home, Lord God, to celebrate the life of their son, Lord. Give them peace in the middle of the situation, Lord God. Continue to cover Buck and the Earl's family, Lord God. Give them peace. Now may the grace of God rest, rule, and abide. Here forth and forevermore. And all the children of God sing together. 